Income tax 2022-2023. Taxes you paid, part number one. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Most of this information can be found on the Schedule A Tax Year 2022 instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. When looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on the itemized deductions, remembering that the first half of the formula is in essence an income statement, although a strange one, where we have income, the equivalent of expenses being the deductions, the equivalent of net income being the taxable income. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Our objective flipped on its head. We want taxable income, in other words, as low as possible, as opposed to normally when we want net income as high as possible. If we go through the equation, we've got the income line, we've got what you might call the above the line deductions, the adjustments to income to get to that subtotal, the subtotal being that important subtotal of AGI, because that's the thing used to calculate phase outs for income levels for deductions and credits. And then we have what you can call the below the line deductions, which is the greater of the standard or itemized deductions. We only take the itemized deductions if they're greater than the standard deduction. And we're focusing in on the components of the itemized deduction at this time. This is the first page of the 1040. If we look at line 12, we got the standard deduction or itemized deduction. This is the itemized deduction schedule A. We're focused here on taxes. Remember that whenever you see itemized deductions, the first thing that usually comes to your mind is, do they own a home? Because if they do, those are the big ones. Those are the home mortgage interest and the property taxes. And then you can get into the weeds once you've cleared the threshold to be itemizing to pick up everything you can beyond that point. Remember that the standard deduction thresholds are 12,950 for single, it's double to 25,900 for married filing joint, 19,400 for head of household. If the client or yourself are nowhere near those numbers to be able to itemize, it should be a more basic return. Always return to basic of life. And then because you're just going to be taking the standard deduction. That said, we're talking about taxes now. Now note, the first thing you might ask is, well, if we're talking about taxes, how can they be deductible if we're trying to calculate the federal income tax? And the answer is because there's a separation between state and local taxes and the federal taxes. There should be a separation of duties between what the federal government does and what the state government does. The federal government primarily being responsible for keeping us safe, having the military and so on, and the state and local governments uh, being responsible for taking care of what's happening on the state and local levels. The state and local governments should be sovereign to some degree to do their own form of taxation, however they want to tax, income tax or, or sales tax or whatever they want to do. Uh, and there, and so, so then the question is, are the state and local taxes then deductible for the federal income tax level? And the answer is, well, some of them are and some of they, them are not. Should they be taxable uh, or deductible on the federal level? Should you be able to deduct state and local taxes on the federal level? That's kind of another question. My response would be that if you were starting this from scratch, from scratch, from scratch, yeah, from scratch. I would not say that you would want to deduct state and local taxes on the federal income tax because it gives the federal government too much influence, I think, on the state and local governments and it tends to subsidize uh, certain types of taxations and uh, certain states. That said, however, now that we've already got the taxes in place and people are dependent upon them and have made long-term plans upon them, it's difficult to adjust it, even if it wouldn't have been a good idea in the first place to put them in, you know, in the first place. And we saw this debate happen 
uh, a few years ago when they put some caps on the state and local taxes, which we'll take a look at uh, as we go through some of the state and local tax stuff. But that's the general layout. So now the question is, okay, they're separate. You got the state taxes, you got the federal income taxes, which taxes then are deductible for federal income tax purposes. So taxes you pay, taxes you can't deduct. So first we'll talk about the ones you cannot deduct. The federal income tax, of course, you cannot deduct because that would be a circle reference. We're calculating the federal income tax and most excise taxes. And then you got the Social Security, Medicare, Federal Unemployment, or FUTA. These are the payroll taxes. Can't deduct the payroll tax for federal income tax and railroad retirement, RRTA. Then you got the customs and duties. Can't deduct federal estate and gift taxes. The death taxes, a different kind of federal tax. So if you died and you're quite wealthy, then or over a certain threshold at least, then the IRS comes and you know picks your corpse and you can't deduct that as well. However, see line 16 later if you had income in respect to a decedent. Certain state and local taxes, including tax on gasoline and, and car inspection, those aren't typically deductible. Those are types of taxes that are trying to be tied to uh, how, how much you use a public good. So the gas tax is supposed to tax people more who use the roads, which is a public good and so on and so forth. You might be able to deduct gasoline, for example, if you had a business, a Schedule C, but you can't just deduct the gas tax on Schedule A, uh, at, which is what we're talking about here. So fees, assessments for sidewalks or other improvements to your property, tax you paid for someone else, and license fees, for example, marriage license, uh, drivers, and pet licenses. You can't uh, deduct your pet license or anything. Foreign personal and real property taxes. So line five, the deduction for state and local taxes is generally limited to $10,000, $5,000 if married filing separately. This is the law that was passed a few years ago and, uh, and it caused a lot of kind of debate. Note that when you're deducting the state taxes, the other thing that's kind of interesting is you've got this, this difference between the high cost of living states and the low cost of living states. And if you're able to deduct the taxes, it tends to subsidize the high cost of living states like California and New York, typically the ones that have a lot of taxes and uh, income taxes related to it. So, so when they capped that, it was kind of a, it was kind of an interesting thing because more wealthy individuals that live in higher income states uh, were are going to be hurt more by that, which is why in the first place it probably shouldn't have been in there in the first place where you have these taxes because it kind of subsidizes uh, certain types of behavior and whatnot in terms of taxes. But it is what it is. So it is what it is. It is what so it's capped at the 10,000 now. So you got to be aware of that state and local taxes subject to this limit are the taxes that you include on lines 5A, 5B and 5C safe harbor for certain charitable contributions made in exchange for a state or local tax credit. So if you made charitable contributions in exchange for a state or local tax credit and your charitable contribution deduction must be reduced as a result of receiving your expecting to receive the tax credit, you may qualify for a safe harbor that allows you to treat some or all of the disallowed charitable contribution as a payment of state and local taxes. Somewhat unusual of a situation, but you know that would usually come up in a more higher income uh, type of situation for tax planning purposes, possibly. The safe harbor applies if you meet the following conditions. You made a cash contribution to an, et an entity described in section 170C. In return for cash contribution, you received a state or local tax credit. You must reduce your charitable contribution amount by the amount of the state or local tax credit you receive. If you meet these conditions and to the extent you apply the state or local tax credit to this or a prior year's state or local tax liability, you may include this amount on line 5A, 5B or 5C, whichever is appropriate. Uh, to the extent you apply a portion of the credit to offset your state or local tax liability in a subsequent year as permitted by law, you may treat this amount as state or local tax paid in the year the credit is applied. For more information about this safe harbor and examples, you can see Treasury Regulation 1.164-3J, U.S. Possession Taxes. 
So include taxes imposed by U.S. possession with your state and local taxes on line 5A, 5B, and 5C. However, don't include any U.S. possession taxes you paid that are all allocable to excluded income. Tip, uh, you may want to take a credit for U.S. possession tax instead of a deduction. So now you've got this question in terms of which one would be benefiting you more, a deduction uh, or a credit. So tax software often helps to make these kind of uh, distinguishing questions. You probably want to run it both ways and see which would be most beneficial. If you're in that situation, you can see the instructions for Schedule 3, Form 1040, Line 1, for details. Line 5A, state and local income taxes. If you don't elect to deduct general sales tax, include on line 5A the state and local income taxes listed next. So note that when we, when we have the taxes that were deductible for the federal income taxes, it used to be, I believe it was just the state uh, income taxes that were deductible which was kind of interesting because again, the states are sovereign to tax any way they want to be taxing. So when they have that law in place, it really severely benefited or, or burdened, however you want to look at it. The, the states that had an income tax were, were the ones that are going to benefit from that kind of situation. And if they had like some other tax system that they thought was better for their particular state, such as a sales tax, then uh, they didn't benefit. So then they tried to adjust that so that so they couldn't remove the state taxes. What they probably should have done is never have the state taxes deductible in the first place, but they can't really remove that. So they tried to even things out by then adding the sales taxes to be deductible for the states that choose to have a sales tax. And so now we've got this, this system where you can deduct the state taxes and, and you get a benefit if you're in a state that has the uh, state income taxes like California, for example, then you can deduct those. And if you're in a state that has a sales tax, then you get some benefit for the sales tax. So uh, state and local taxes withheld from your salary. Raise your salary. During 2022. So if you're in like California with a state tax, then the withholdings are going to be much the same. They try to mirror the same structure as the federal income tax system. So for forms W-2, we'll show these amounts. So forms W-2G, 1099-G, 1099-R, 1099-Miscellaneous, and 1099-NEC may also show state and local income taxes withheld. However, don't include on line 5A any withheld taxes you deducted on other forms such as Schedule C, E, or F. So it's usually fairly straightforward. If you're in like California, you're going to have the, the W-2, for example, which will show the withholdings. So state and local income taxes paid in 2022 for a prior year, such as taxes paid with your 2022 state or local income tax return, don't include penalties or interest. Now, when I say it's pretty straightforward, I mean it's pretty straightforward with the data input. And usually when you look at the withholdings for the state, you're thinking about the state income tax return, the tax calculation, and then how much you paid. But also note that you paid that taxes out of your paycheck to the government and that's the thing that might be deductible as a schedule a itemized deduction if you have the capacity to take the itemized deductions all right once again state and, state and local income taxes in 2022 for a prior year such as taxes paid with your 2021 state or local income tax return don't include penalties or interest so this is the other kind of funny thing you've got this cutoff problem because it's usually going to be determined on a cash based system, right? So you might have made a payment for 2021 tax year for the state taxes, which you actually paid in 2022 because you paid it because you owed money when you made your taxes, but you actually paid it in 2022. So you might be able to deduct that as an itemized deduction in 2022. Note that your, your software often is quite useful to help you with these cutoff uh, cutoff situations as well. And it's useful to see what the software does and then deconstruct it and, and try to figure out, okay, are we in a cash-based or, or accrual-based system? We're typically in a cash-based kind of system here. So state and local uh, estimated tax payments made during 2022 include any part of a prior year refund that you chose to have credited to your 2022 state or local income taxes. So now if you had a refund uh, in, 2021 for example and you said that you wanted to apply it 
to the estimated payments. So maybe you have a Schedule C, for example, and then you th then you did your taxes for tax year 2021 by April 15th of 2022, let's say, and then you got a refund from the state and you said, okay, just take that refund and make it my first estimated tax payment, applying it to the taxes paid in 2022. Well, that would be kind of like the same thing as if they gave you the refund and then you gave it back to them and said, now this is my payments for 2022. So you're paying taxes in 2022. So that might be included in uh, itemized deductions if you're itemizing for state tax deduction. Mandatory contributions you made to the California, New Jersey, or New York non-occupational disability benefit fund, Rhode Island temporary disability benefit fund, or Washington state supplemental workers compensation fund. So mandatory contribution to the Alaska, California, New York, uh, New Jersey, or Pennsylvania state unemployment fund. Don't reduce your de your deduction by any state or local income tax refund or credit you expect to receive for 2022 or refund of or credit for prior year estate and local income taxes you actually received in 2022. Instead, see the instructions for schedule one. So you might say, hey, look, I if I if I paid the tax in 2022, but then I calculated my 2022 state taxes and I'm going to get a refund. So what is that going to do? So now what, what do I have to do? Say this is my taxes that I paid in 2022, but then I'm going to get a refund in 2023. So shouldn't I have to take that refund that I know I'm going to get and reduce the amount that I paid by the amount that I'm going to get refunded? And the general answer is you don't typically do that because the, the idea is going to be that we just want to keep it on a cash based system. If you paid it in 2022, you paid it. And then when you receive the uh, the refund in 2023, well, if you got a benefit from the deduction in 2022, as we talked on the income side, then we'll include that state refund as income. So that's why when we talked about the income side, we said, if you got a refund from the state, you might have to include it in income. You only include it in income if you got a benefit from the state tax deduction in the prior year. Now you might say, hey, that leads to some shady business that can happen right there because you might say, well, I'm just gonna maximize the, the payments, my state taxes. I'm gonna pay a whole bunch of state taxes in 2022, lowering my, my taxable income in 2022 and then I'm just gonna, and then I'm gonna get the refund and I'll include it in 2023. So, so there, you can imagine someone trying to like manipulate the system. That's the problem with a cash based system. And of course that would only be beneficial if like 2022 was a really high income year. And you're like, I'm gonna, if, if it was beneficial to lower 2022, because in 2023, you're gonna have a low income year because you're not gonna make any money that year. You made all the money this year in some whatever business you're in. So you'd like to, you know, if you had income next year, it's not going to, it's, it's not going to hurt you as much as you'd rather get the benefit this year, right? You have these timing problems. That's the problem with a cash based uh, type of system versus an accrual based type of system. But the benefit is it's easier to do, right? So state and local general sales tax. If you elect to deduct state and local general sales tax instead of income taxes, you must check the box on line 5A. So if you're in a state that doesn't have the the income tax then you should still get a benefit because you're still paying taxes it's just that now you're paying a sales tax which is generally going to be higher than states that have an income stat tax except that in states like california and new york we have all kinds of taxes because they just waste money like crazy it's ridiculous in any case to figure your state and local general sales tax deduction you can use either your actual expenses or the optional sales tax tables so if you're using the sales tax tables it's quite easy to calculate but if you had actual sales, some tax calculations, it could be easier. Obviously, it's difficult to know what your actual sales tax is because everything you purchased is going to have a sales tax on it. But if you have a if you have a large ticket item, you bought a you bought a yacht or something, then you're going to have a, a large sales tax that's going to be higher than the average tables that are going to be used to calculate the sales tax. So the actual expenses, generally, you can deduct the actual state and local general sales tax, including compensating use taxes you paid in 2022 if the tax rate was the same as the general sales tax rate. So food, clothing, and medical supplies. 
Sales taxes on food, clothing, and medical supplies are deductible as a general sales tax, even if the tax rate was less than the general sales tax rate. Motor vehicles. Sales tax on motor vehicles are deductible as a general sales tax, even if the tax was different than the general sales tax rate. However, if you paid sales tax on a motor vehicle at a rate higher than the general sales tax, you can deduct only the amount of the tax that you would have paid at the general sales tax rate on that vehicle. So if you paid some, you know, it's the general sales tax rate. So include any state and local general sales taxes paid for uh, leased motor vehicles. So you can see how, you know, businesses, if there's a deduction related to, to sales taxes, then you can, there's an incentive to try to manipulate the cost to be categorized as something that could be deductible like sales taxes. And you can see situations where they might say, well, it, that was applied to a higher sales tax so that you didn't get a deduction, but no, you have to use the general sales tax. So motor vehicles include cars, motorcycles, motor homes, recreational vehicles, sports utility vehicles, trucks, vans, and off-road vehicles. Caution, you must keep your actual receipts showing general sales taxes paid to use this method. Obviously that gets quite tedious because again, you pay sales tax on everything you purchase, which is why uh, if you're not buying big ticket items, sometimes the tables are just easier to use oftentimes. Trade or business items. Don't include sales tax paid on items used in your trade or business. Instead, go to the instructions for the form you are using to report business income and expenses to see if you can deduct these taxes. So <clears throat> the taxes on the trade or business, the Schedule C is, is where you go for those items. So for example, if you bought a computer for personal use, then, then you might be able to deduct the sales taxes on the Schedule A related to it as sales taxes, right? But if you bought the computer for business uses, then on the Schedule C, the whole computer itself might be a deductible, including the sales tax, you would think. It might have, you might have to put it on the books and depreciate it, but you'd think you'd get the deductible up capacity of the computer because including the sales tax because you're using the whole thing and you bought it in order to generate revenue for the business. We'll talk about Schedule C businesses later. And you can't double dip. You can't say, I'm going to deduct the whole computer and the sales tax on the Schedule C and deduct the part of the sales tax on the Schedule A. That would be taking two deductions for the same thing. Refund of general sales taxes. If you receive a refund of state or local general sales taxes in 2022 for amounts paid in 2022, reduce your actual 2022 uh, state and local sales taxes by this amount. So the sales taxes are a little bit different than the the income taxes or they're, they're kind of the same thing, right? There's basically if, if in 2022 you paid the sales tax and then you got refunded the sales tax, but we're talking that you got refunded the sales tax in 2022, then you can take care of that in 2022 and reduce your sales tax deduction for the amount that was refunded. If you receive a refund of the state or local general sales tax in 2022 for prior year purchase, don't reduce your 2022 state and local general sales taxes by this amount. However, if you deducted your actual state and local general sales taxes in the earlier year and the deduction reduced your tax, you may have to include the refund in income on Schedule 1, Form 1040, Line 8Z, see recoveries in Publication 525 for details. So this is the similar rule as with the state income tax. So meaning if you got a refund of the sales tax for whatever reason, that's more unusual than with an income tax type of system. But if you got a refund for it and it was related to the prior year, then you have to do the same kind of thing that we talked about with this state income tax refund. You gotta say, well, did I get a benefit from it last year? by getting a deduction on the Schedule A related to it, tax software is quite helpful to calculate that. And then if you did, then you'd have to include the, the amount as income in the year that you got the refund on. But again, that's more unusual of a system that you'd see, although maybe it's more common than I would know because I'm in a state with sales tax, so I, I don't see how common that is possibly. <clears throat> but I would think just the way the tax code is set up that that is not as common as with the, the sales tax refund. Optional sales tax tables. 
Instead of using your actual expenses, you can use the 2022 optional uh, state sales tax table and the 2022 optional local sales tax tables at the end of these instructions to figure your state and local general sales tax deductions. That's the easy way to do it and the tax software helps you to do that way. So you may also be able to add the state and local general sales taxes paid on certain special items. So to figure your state and local general sales tax deduction using the tables, complete the state and local general sales tax deduction worksheet or use the sales tax deduction calculator. You can find that at the IRS website. And obviously again, tax software will help you to cal calculate and populate those tables. So caution, if your filing status is married filing separately, both you and your spouse elect to deduct sales taxes and your spouse elects to use the optional sales tax table, you also must use the tables to figure your state and local general sales tax, which kind of makes sense because again, the IRS is skeptical that you're gonna file, you're gonna say you're one taxable entity, but you decided to file separately, possibly because one person bought a yacht on over here and they wanna deduct the sales tax of the yacht that they purchased, which is gonna be quite a lot of sales tax. And the other person is gonna just take the sales tax on the table. When, and it's like, well, no, you have to pick one or the other because you're like one taxable entity, even though you're deciding to file married filing separate. So we're not going to let you do that. If one person chooses to have the sales tax using the tables, then the other one has to do that too. Any case, instructions for the state and local general sales tax deduction work worksheet line one. If you live in the same state for all of 2022, enter the applicable amount based on your 2022 income and family size from the 2022 optional state sales tax table for your state. Read line, uh, read down the quote, at least but less than quote columns for your state and find the line that includes your 2022 income. If married filing separately, don't include your spouse's income. Note the family size column refers to the number of dependents listed on page one of form 1040 or form 1040 SR and any uh, continuation sheets plus you, you and if you are filing a joint return, your spouse. So if you are married and not filing a joint return, you include your spouse in family size only in certain circumstances, which are described in publication 501. Income. So your 2022 income is the amount shown on form 1040 or 1040 SR line 11, uh, plus any non-taxable items such as the following. So this is when we're calculating, you know, the, the income items, we're usually using the AGI and oftentimes they might have like a modified AGI. So we have line 11 plus any non-taxable items such as tax exempt interest, veterans benefits, non-taxable combat pay, workers' compensation, non-taxable part of Social Security and railroad retirement benefits, non-taxable part of IRA, pension or annuity distributions, don't include rollovers, public assistance payments. Again, hopefully tax software can help us with these types of calculations. We'll continue on with some more state and local taxes in a following presentation.